Welcome, welcome, and it is officially 2022. Woohoo! And we want to start this new year by saying thank you to all our supporters, whether you're listening, whether you're watching, whether you're just following us. Thank you guys so much. And if you're new here, make sure that you guys hit a rating on us, send us a review, like, subscribe, just do the thing. We like all our supporters, old and new. So from here at us at On The Line, we want to say thank you very much. Thank you. Now it's the new year, and with the new year comes New Year's resolutions. So we're going to be talking about goal setting, because that's what a New Year's resolution is. It's a goal that you want to set. And we're going to try to make you guys achieve that goal this year, give you tips on how to track and keep yourself accountable on these goals. We're also going to share our personal New Year's resolutions with you. And though it's 2022, it is still the same. We're not experts, but let us help you guys because we're not dummies. So let me introduce my fellow on the liner. We have Steve. What is going on, everyone? Happy New Year. Let's start it off with a bang. Next to me, I've got Crystal. Hey, guys. Welcome to the new year. I hope you guys started off really good. And we hope you guys set some good, measurable resolutions by listening to this episode. And our host today is Jun. Now it is 2022 and we want to help you guys. And that might be something new, but we're going to make sure that your New Year's resolution is something that you will actually do. And we are now on the line. With this episode, we're actually going to be doing a game throughout the whole thing. And it is going to be Lyric Sneak. So we're going to be doing lyrics from artists like Ariana Grande, Drake, Bruno Mars. And we're going to be sprinkling them in through each section. And we're going to try to guess, hopefully, what lyric <laughs> has been said. If someone was sneaky enough and just sprinkle it in there perfectly without anyone noticing. So we're going to be playing Lyric Sneak. And to start, we're going to be doing our personal resolutions. And I wanted to start this by saying... Did you guys actually make a resolution last year in 2021? I did, but tell you the truth that I check a lot off. Not the so much. <laughs> <laughs> I made a few resolutions for this year um, or for last year, but I think I've I, I made like two or three of them. I got halfway through one of them and the other two are still a work in progress. So oh my gosh. <laughs> I got three like check marked. So one of them was go back to school, which I'm doing. I'm getting my MBA. Woohoo. Two was nice. get promoted at work, which I just made it this close by really close Very to nice. 2022. So I got promoted, check mark, and then pay off three credit cards. Really happy. The one that I'm not happy about is I wanted to read 12 books and I only read four or five, I think. Sounds but like a win. I hope I can do more <laughs> later. And then I had just like small stuff, which is like in general, enjoy the little things was one of them. And I think I did that pretty well. Very nicely done. Yeah, I actually didn't set any goal last year. It was kind of weird. There was just a lot going on. <laughs> so I didn't even like, I didn't even think of making one. I remember uh, our cousin sent his goal out and he's like, what's your guys' goal? And I'm like, I don't, I don't have one. So uh, this year I'm going to do better and I'm actually making a goal that I will try to follow. And it does sound like you guys make several goals. Is that yeah. Yeah. kind of the same this year too? You're making several goals? Yeah. No, I'm focusing on one goal. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to be doing one single New Year's resolution. Um, Although I will be making little other goals and tweaks to things as I go along because I think that's how it should be because the leader is so long to make one goal just as kind of unless it's a su super long term goal. You gotta keep it keep it active by doing a bunch of different things. Yep. For this year, since I didn't read 12 books last year, <laughs> I'm going to make it a little, you know, <laughs> more attainable for this year. I'm going to go with read six books. So I think I could read six books by the end of the year. That's like a book every two months. Just want to, you know, I want to, I really want to read for personal enjoyment, but also sprinkle in a few books that are like actually self-improvement. So probably like 
for enjoyable. I usually like to read like true crime murder books and then two self-help books or just something to expand my knowledge in an area. Nice. That's not bad. I like that goal because like reading books is definitely something that's really easy because you could do it sweatpants, hair tie, chilling with no makeup on and you're just at home and doing, you know, on your own time. You said every one, every two months, that's on your own time. You have no like limit. It's Mm -hmm. not like a book report where like you got to do this and then you got to finish this at a certain time. So (laughs) reading books, although I personally would never recommend anyone to read books for a new year's resolution you know a lot of people do end up doing that so in addition to reading six books i have another goal by may or at least by halfway through this year i want to sort and organize our storage closet (laughs) it is literally (laughs) so scary in there can't even reach the back it's huge our storage closet is huge but like I don't even know what's in there. It's like we moved and we threw things in there. And now when we are like, oh, I know we have that, but it's in the storage closet. We might as well buy it a new one because we're never going to find it. There's no way. So I need to sort through it, organize it. There's a lot of stuff in there. Hopefully around spring cleaning time, at least before summer, I want to get it cleaned out and organized and have some sort of system. And then I have some more general ones, but I want to hear what your guys' personal resolutions are. Well, my resolution is... What I want to do with my resolution is to create an operational savings. And when I say operational, I've always had savings and I always do have a certain savings. But whether or not they're pretty practical is kind of on the verge of, you know, (laughs) however you define what kind of savings you have. I want an operational savings where I start like because I use Chase. So I'm going to I want to start a Chase savings that I can actually very easily through an app just take money that I get from income and I could just put it in there a percentage of it each time I get paid just like clockwork nice. boom boom yeah. boom and also since you have the numbers there cuz normally I actually pull out money and I keep it in like a briefcase <laughs> cold hard cash there's not really an accounting on it so with a savings on an app you can actually read and see how much you have saved up literally for so long that's pretty much what we do we have like a wallet in a drawer and we just throw (laughs) cash in there because we don't have an actual (laughs) savings account which i recommend people to get because especially if it increases in amount because of interest like it's so much better to have a a savings account. so i might add this in I may add this into my re- my <laughs> resolutions too. And I definitely, the reason why I say I want to add stuff is because I feel like, you know, as far as, you know, being operational and inputting money every time I do get income, I do get paid. I It's kind of, once I set it and I do it, it's kind of done with. So I do want to add some stuff to see if I could work on other areas. But for right now, that's the main one that I want to do. That's a good one. A really good one. My personal resolution for this year is to just get my body back in shape. It's been (laughs) a long time coming. I was in the best shape of my life in the beginning of 2020. And I feel like I just haven't been comfortable enough to get back into the gym with COVID being uh, out here. But I feel like this year, I think it's time for me to get back into the gym. There's no more excuse for me to just come home and not do anything for the rest of the day. I need to get back in shape. I need to stop waking up in pain and running out of breath (laughs) and eating whatever I want to eat. I need to get back in the gym and get my body back in shape. COVID is like, it's been that kind of saving grace for everyone who's kind of been wanting to be a little more lazy because you're like, I can't really go yet. (laughs) I can't go to the gym yet because it's COVID, but it's, you know, it's with boosters and all that stuff. It's you, it's getting to that point where you can't use it anymore as an excuse. <laughs> yeah, I can't use it for the whole like rest of 2020. I was just staying at home. You know, David Blaine last summer, he had to vanish because COVID was out here. So I ended up just staying in. And then 2021, we didn't want to risk getting COVID any, any more there, too. So I've just been uh, racking up these excuses as to not go in into the gym and get myself in shape same and uh good luck with that one because i don't know if i want to hop on that train yet (laughs) but i do want to reinstate morning walks because we used to like during the warmer or like just not freezing cold months we would walk in the morning like right when we woke up we would go for a walk first thing 
just to like get fresh air and get our body going, which actually was nice. I feel like that was really helpful. We can go for a walk. You want to walk? Right now? I don't <laughs> know about that. It's like negative degrees. Freezing walks, actually, if you think about it, is like uh, even better because your body has to work to keep normal temperature. So although you're walking and you're keeping yourself warm, it's like double yeah. the exercise, you know? You know what? Yeah. I mean, Maybe you should start I mean, incorporating I mean. the brisk walks. Wait, I mean. I love being outside. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm down. It's the waking up early is the biggest hurdle. But, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. tough. It's that's all tough. <laughs> That's why it's not one of our resolutions this year. <laughs> I have like some smaller goals. I mean, like general goals, kind of like last year I had enjoy the little things this year. It's be in the moment. I have another one, too, but be in, I definitely want to like start being more in the moment instead of my head because I'm usually just in my mind a lot thinking about stuff and I'm usually stress, you know, I've been working on the weekend like usual, way off in the deep end like usual. And I just need to be in the moment, you know? Why are you laughing? What do you mean? <laughs> You know what they say. You know what they say. Life's good and New Year's resolutions make life even certainly better. Well, the other one, I think everybody should have this resolution. <laughs> this one is really hard to keep, but I think it's something we should be mindful about. So I saw this thing and basically they talked about how our whole life we just spend putting crap away. So there's this thing called the one touch rule where when you touch something and you take it from its place, when you're done using it, you put it back in its place. So you're only touching it once to use it because usually you'll like pick something up, you'll use it and then you set it down somewhere that it's where it doesn't belong. So you, throughout the year, you're literally just constantly putting things away and moving things around when you could just save time by just putting it back in its rightful, rightful place. And that's kind of hard to measure. Yeah. So more of a general rule, but I think that's a good one for everybody to do. So like keep your place clean, but also stop spending time putting things away. Yeah. I like that rule because at the, the back end of 2021, I definitely started to organize my room slightly more. I usually just have kind of like sections off of shelves where it's just like a clutter of just whatever. <laughs> and because I don't Same. I don't practice that. I don't take things and like if I have it in my hand, I need to get rid of it. I'm just like that wherever I am, boop. There yeah. it goes. So it's, it's like so I got I got to put it back to where it's supposed to be. And with organization, that's definitely going to help cuz you can know, this goes here, this goes here, arapa. So before we switch to our next section, we're going to go ahead and see if we were paying attention to each other. I think we all kind of got what <laughs> we wanted because it was making us pretty easy. Um, I'm going to start it off. Crystal definitely, I, as I mentioned before, she did Life's <laughs> Good by Drake. I think everybody, um, everybody knew why. Yeah. <laughs> you know, working familiar. on the weekends like usual, you know. And Way up in the uh, deep end. Like usual. So, yeah, I, I got that right. Correct? Yep. Well done. Let's go. I couldn't get Stevens. <laughs> I literally have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It, what oh, was it, it was so, I guess because I knew what it was. It was like so uh, obvious Unless... because it also, it also mentions uh, David Blaine. <laughs> Just yeah. I, don't remember. I literally the lyric, had no idea. The lyric, what was, is it? The uh, lyric what was I it? said was David Blaine last summer, man, you had to vanish. I literally <laughs> I had no idea. Those, that's that's from Drake featuring 21 Savage and Sneakin. Uh oh so my gosh. Maybe you guys heard that because uh I definitely did when it came out. <laughs> and Steve, what is what was your did you catch what I said? I, I heard you say you could stay at home, sweatpants, hair tied, chilling with no makeup on. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Best Reading I ever had, Drake. <laughs> Dang it. Nice. I need to pay attention better. 
<laughs> that was good. All right, so we're going to move into our next section. And this is the Ariana Grande section. With our resolutions set, what are your guys' ways to then achieve these resolutions that you did make? Because the hardest part about a resolution, and sometimes, you know, you might think it's coming up with one in the first place because it's pretty difficult. But to actually <laughs> go through and follow through and track, your, track yourself, achieve it, and actually keep yourself accountable when you're making your New Year's resolution. This is the hard part, right? It's the hardest part of making goals. You can set goals super easy. You can make a ton. But actually keeping yourself accountable <laughs> And tracking to them is the hardest part. So I think that I like to do to keep New Year's resolutions or goals in general is to share that with other people. Because if other people know what your goal is, they can kind of keep you in check. So it's almost like you don't really have to be fully on it yourself. Because say if your goal is to stop eating cake and a friend of yours <laughs> that you told, I'm going to stop eating cake, sees you about to eat a cake, they'll be like, hey, don't eat that cake. That's your goal. That's your resolution. So you sure. said you were not going <laughs> to eat cake. So stop eating cake. <laughs> and what is this? So definitely, you know, share your goal with other people. And then likewise, share your progress with other people. Because if you're doing your New Year's resolution, it's something that's really hard. If you share your progress, it gives you that kind of motivation. Like you get to, you know, share, hey, I actually, I, my goal was to bench press 315 pounds. I'm now bench pressing 225 or whatever. So it's it's nice to have someone to kind of offload and be like, hey, just check out my progress. I'm doing pretty good. And when you tell other people when you're getting those small wins, you can have they're celebrating with you. So you're kind of getting that validation that like, hey, I'm pretty doing pretty good, you know, and then celebrating your wins is honestly really important in goals. So I like that. I do like sharing your goal with somebody else to basically hold you accountable. And to just remind you when you have those mental breaks and just like, I think I'm going to go eat cake. You, you, you said, you just said last week, you weren't going to do it. And you what are you doing? You weren't going to eat cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's good to share those goals with somebody. How do you guys feel about, um, cause this is, I do think you should share your goals with somebody, but I don't think you should share them with like the entire world. Cause I kind of believe in that no. thing where you make moves in silence. Because if you just keep telling everybody what your goals are and then you don't achieve them, it's like, I don't know. You know the thing where people say make moves in silence and then you only tell everybody when you reach that success. Yeah, it, it comes. I feel like it's like on the flip side of that coin where it's like people are always just trying to see you fail. There's a bunch of haters out there, so they don't want to see other people succeed, especially if they don't feel like they're succeeding on their own. So I definitely do that a lot of times is I don't like to share certain things if it's like a a goal that i really want to make so that i can then be like hey guys by the way i hit it like i didn't tell anyone i was transferring to nyu until i actually got accepted because i didn't i it was <laughs> one of those things where i didn't want to like be like hey i'm applying to this thing and people are like oh you're gonna go to nyu blah 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 and then i don't get it and i'm like actually no i didn't do it so like i don't want to have to play to others i, I just yeah. wanted it it was just a goal for myself it's kind of how I act on it as well. But at the same time, if somebody were to ask me if I have a resolution or what my plan is, I'm not going to hide it. It's something that I feel like it's just I like to tell people what's going on in my life just because I, I have no reason to hide it. And if they have any kind of ill intent towards what my progress is and that's on them. But, you know, I know I should have fought it, but at least I'm being honest. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so my next one is really close to sharing your progress with others, but basically has to do with other people. So one of them to keep yourself accountable is be around people who are trying to achieve similar or same goals. If you're doing something that someone else is also trying to attain, it makes you motivated to also attain those goals. If your goal is to work out, get someone whose also goal that year is to work out and be healthy because now you're both sharing that same journey and keeping each other accountable. Yeah. Sharing journeys and like kind of creating that team. Like it's now it's a collaboration makes goals, uh, goal setting and achieving a lot easier. And it's really hard, especially if you wanted to do like a workout goal that if you have a workout buddy, 
one thing that kept me going to the gym is when I had someone who was working out with me. Like, I couldn't skip on certain days because if they're like, oh, I'm already here at the gym, I couldn't just bail on them and be like, okay, I'm not going. I just have to go now. So that's definitely a, a huge accountability boost when you have someone with a shared goal that you can kind of tag along with. I feel like Steven said his lyric and I'm really upset because I didn't catch it. Oh, <laughs> seamless. Getting someone to, you know, that is trying to achieve the same goal as you really helps stay on track with your own goal and to hold yourself accountable. Like what Jen was saying, I, I want to go back into the gym. So like finding someone to go to the gym with me or maybe finding a workout buddy to kind of monitor my own progress with me would be extremely helpful. Uh, but a way for, for me to keep my plan on track for getting back in shape is to creating a plan that I know that I'll follow, focusing on the beginning of that plan, just so that I know there weren't, there won't be any, you know, drop offs in trying to reach my new year's resolution. Uh, I said, I'm trying to get back in shape, go back to the gym. And one way I'm going to try to create this plan and focus on the beginning is making milestones. So hopefully by February 14th, let's say Valentine's day, just because it's the first day that popped into my head. That's pretty close. I should have been going to the gym uh, routinely for three, three times a week. There are times where I'm going to be skipping one or two days, but if I can get into the gym routinely three times a week by Valentine's day, then I'm in good shape. And then I'll just plan uh, to hit bigger milestones accordingly later. Yeah, that actually really closely ties into uh, one of my other tips was, you know, don't plan like a New Year's resolution is for the whole year. Yes, I get it. But don't plan for the whole year. I like to if you have a, a New Year's resolution, why don't you make a shorter plan at the beginning? You do that one to three months, two months, one, three, two months plan and then go from there. Don't be like, OK, by December, I want this <laughs> New Year's resolution to be done. Because then you say a month passes by and you just forget about it. But if you kind of keep yourself in check by not planning the whole year, but planning for the first couple of months first, you keep yourself in check. Because if you're, say, like in July and it's you kind of forget or as you're going into November and you're like, oh, wait, I didn't do that New Year's resolution. And you'd be like, you know, right now I'm in that state of mind. You know, I want to be in like all the time. You know, I got no tears left to cry. And it's just... It's a desperate situation that you want to get out of. When you're making your goals, you kind of want to, in your plan, make their like smaller goals in there. Do you put a time in your plan for the year? Like when you're going to stop habits you want to stop? Like obviously if you're working out, you want to stop eating bad food or whatever cause to like start eating healthy. You know, if I'm like really like desserts and I really want to eat desserts, like if I'm going to bakery with everybody i'm gonna be like you know one last time i'm I'm gonna need to take you home this cupcake right here but how do you know when that stop is do you put that in your plan i feel like that's something that is a continuous work in progress i don't think like creating a plan for the first three months and then you know seeing how that fits into the end of the year is something that is concrete or something that needs to be made up on the spot it is something that like I said, is incremental. So it's like, as of right now, I need to focus on getting into the gym because things like changing my diet, changing my sleeping habits, changing my lifestyle can then follow after that. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely like that progression. Like the big goal is to be, to get back into shape how you were before. So <laughs> to start it off is to just get into the gym and then maybe later because it's going to be more fluid, now I now that I'm in the gym, because that's the best way to get fit like before, now I can start working on all the other stuff and they just proliferate from there. And then also I heard um that you know you actually gain more weight if you eat healthy for a very long time and then eat unhealthy versus if you were to just eat unhealthy throughout the entire way. I think you guys made that up. I don't yeah. know. Is that I've, true? It, I, it's true. I've heard that. No. Recent studies it, have been confirmed. No. Confirmed ancient studies. There's nothing. <laughs> that oh, I, I like no. to, uh, I like to live by up. this rule where I just eat unhealthy because I don't want to end up gaining more weight <laughs> later on. It's worse. Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> 
So it's either yeah. co- eat completely unhealthy or just eat healthy all the time. You don't want to flip a twin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So my last one here is to write your resolutions down and goals down and keep them somewhere that you will either look at every day or just visible visual to yourself. So like if you have a board, whiteboard at home, keep it on your whiteboard. If you have like a notebook that you're using every day, make it like the first page so you see it every day or in your planner so that every day you're reminding yourself like these are the things I'm working towards and you don't forget about them because you need to constantly remind yourself that you have these goals. Otherwise, you're just going to forget them. Mm. Definitely write them down, make them real and remind yourself every day and keep it at the forefront of your mind. So I'm a big and avid uh, notes user on the iPhone, if you guys are familiar. Uh, So I definitely write things down like that, like a New Year's resolution or whatever onto notes. Although it's not something that I see all the time, it is something that I can remember to check every so often. Although I won't remember the New Year's resolution sometimes, I will definitely remember to check my notes. I think having a visual reminder is great just because your mind can get it can just wander through i don't know having an emotional day or a stressful day so you forget just going through day-to-day responsibilities what your goal is for the year right and what you're actually working towards so having a visual reminder just to keep your mind grounded and working towards that one goal is something that's really great i have a notebook and i write in there the my goals but i also use notes and if you do make a note with your news resolution, you should pin it because on your phone, you can pin it to the top so that anytime you ever go to your notes, you'll see it and you can remind yourself to look at it because it's always at the top. Do you guys think that if you make a New Year's resolution and say you achieve it in like a month, job well done? Or do you think that you should like have more resolutions coming up? Like, do you think it's important to just always have? A some type of goal throughout the year or is it fine like you achieved your goal you did it you did it in breaking time and then that's good <laughs> enough i think it depends uh it depends on how satisfied you are with you know reaching that goal i want to get back in shape let's say in three months i'm in tip-top shape and i'm in olympiad Right. I don't think I should be satisfied at that point or I could be just because, you know, I'm just walking, walking the streets as an everyday Joe and being an Olympiad isn't something that's completely necessary unless it's something that I want to do. If it's my hobby or if it's in my interest to keep going, then I, I think it's important to, you know, reshape that goal and take it a step further. You clearly have the tools to reach the goals that you want in record time so if you can and you want to sure uh make another goal create another plan but if i'm trying to read 12 books in a year and then i read 12 books in january i'm not gonna read any more books i'll tell you that right now what the (laughs) i think it's important to make new goals because i mean it's different for everybody depends on what you want to achieve in life but in general i just want to constantly be improving myself in one way or the other so I think it's important to celebrate and reward yourself when you do achieve the goals that you have you have set for yourself. But if you finish it in like the first quarter of the year, you you have three quarters of your life in that year to go through. I think it's important to still challenge yourself and work towards something. I mean, it's different what you want to do, but I think to keep yourself well rounded and to constantly be learning, you want to challenge yourself and set more goals or a new goal at least so that you're always like working towards something what i used to do is i kind of did what crystal did with like multiple goals but i had like them in sections so it'd be like a health and wellness section and i'd have my new year's resolution for that i'd have a financial section my new year's resolution for that and i would have like say social section and have a resolution for that that way like if i finished one I can boom, I jump onto the next one or I can work at all three of them at the same time so that the duration, so I don't end up, I don't end up finishing them all in one go. So I think it is definitely something that if you finish a goal, you should always try to improve more and have more goals that you can set. Because if you reach it in one month, that's, you know, kudos to you. 
You did it. Try to do another one. <laughs> we finished that section, the Ariana Grande section, as we will dub it. Do we, <laughs> do we know <laughs> what uh -huh. lyric was said? Now, I'm going to say this. I knew exactly the lyric <laughs> when Crystal said it. But throughout the conversation, I have completely forgot what you said. So maybe if you give me some time, I can remember what you said. So I'll go I'll last. Let, I'll let you know that I said it in a part where I was talking about cupcakes. I know the moment Steven said his because y'all were laughing. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what it was. So you could just it tell was, me. It was it. very well done. I have no yeah. idea. It sounded like a conversation. I was just like, what? What are y'all laughing about? I, I missed it. Thank you. What was it? My lyric was, I know I should have fought it. At least I'm being honest. Dang, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it was that part. <laughs> I believe Jen said that he has no tears left to cry. Yup. Well done. <laughs> I wow. didn't tell you an Ariana Grande song that's coming from, but got no tears you actually got it cry. on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's literally the name of the song. Well nice. Done. Oh, what did Crystal say? I... I <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you. I, I laughed when she said it. So every everybody who doesn't believe me that I know it, go back to that section. I definitely <laughs> laughed because I knew it. But Crystal, you why don't you go did. ahead and tell me? Why don't you go ahead and tell me what you said? Because I totally forgot. I said, you know, if you're in a bakery and you're with your friends and you just want to eat one of the cupcakes, you're like, you know, one, one last time, I'm going to need to take be the one who takes you home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea to use that lyric, but <laughs> I fit it in somehow. So one last time by Ariana Grande. Really good. So the score for our lyric sneak, Steve has gone uh -huh. flawless right now. He's got two out of two. Uh, Crystal's got a huge donut, you know. <laughs> she, hopefully, Dang. hopefully she can improve on the next one. And I am one for one. Although, Ooh. as we all know, I'm technically two for two because I definitely knew that one. Um, our final section, we're going to be incorporating Bruno Mars lyrics. Good luck to all of us with that. Yeah. We're going to be talking about goal setting in general, short term, long term goals, because that's what a New Year's resolution is. At the end of the day, it's a goal and you got to know how to set your goal. I'm going to start off with setting goals in general. So whether that's a short term or a long term goal, this is what I learned in school, actually, is to make sure your goals are SMART. The acronym SMART. Here's the acronym here on the screen. If you're watching SMART goals, make sure your goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound. So basically. When you make a goal, make sure that it's very specific. It's clear exactly what you want to accomplish and you know exactly what you need to do to accomplish that goal. Measurable is how do you know you've achieved that goal? So like example, my general goals, like the one touch rule, I can't really measure it because otherwise I have to like literally count every time I don't do it or do do it. And it's just way too hard to measure. Make sure your goal is really easy to measure. So like I need to read six books. So I got to check off one every time I read a book. That's really easy to measure. And then make sure they're attainable. You can't just set unrealistic goals. You have to make sure you can actually attain them and be realistic about it. And then relevant. Is your goal relevant to your long-term goals? Is your goal relevant to anything? Like doesn't even matter if you achieve it. Got to make sure if it's relevant. And last time bound. Make sure that there's an end to that goal. Because if it's like, oh, by whenever, whenever, however long it takes me, you're never going to achieve it because you're not going to set yourself a boundary to actually do it. It has like an end time, like by the end of the year, by the end of the month, in three years kind of thing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a great really acronym. Great. It encompasses basically everything. <laughs> everything. So because Crystal said everything, I'm going to go ahead and say that I have this thing called the SMART goal. I'm going to go live by this <laughs> acronym and create this SMART goal. Well, a part that I really kind of key in on the SMART acronym is the attainable 
part, the 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 A in smart, uh, because you definitely want to be realistic. Because if it's like I want to win five Oscars, it's like it's not attainable. That's not something that even actors can realistically set for themselves. Technically, if it's something that you can't even achieve, if it's just a pipe dream then there's really no point to setting that goal in the first place. You might as well not have set anything. So I think the attainability in the SMART acronym is definitely very important. I mean, you could definitely dream big. I believe in the whole shoot for the, the moon and, figure, you know, what is it? <laughs> shoot for the moon. And if you don't reach it, you land on one of the stars and you're still... Aim, aim for the stars because if yep. you don't reach it, then you'll find it, land on the clouds, something like that. Players only, <laughs> come on, put your pinky rings up to the moon and if you can't make it to the moon you can reach for the stars so if that's fine if you want to dream big but make sure you have like little stars lined up after smaller goals that can be reached that can attribute to your big dream i'm going to be basically applying that to my new year's resolution by getting into the gym i'm going to be setting smaller goals more specific goals basically just to get myself back at the baseline that I want my body to be at to where then I can start manipulating my routines to get back into the shape that I specifically want to be in. I can, you know, work on the foundational muscles and then work towards manipulating that. So then sharpening and creating a more solid uh, workout routine that'll get me towards overall uh, optimal shape. And that kind of works in with the idea that I have is like short term plans are they, you know, they're changing and they can be fluid because if you do something and as we spoke on before, you know, you have root recalculations and you also if you finish <laughs> the goal, then you can change it. You can loop it. Say you're working out and you're working on your chest and you're doing, you know, your bench press and you're succeeding really well at that. But how's your decline bench press? How's your incline bench press? How's your dumbbell <laughs> press? There's a bunch of little things. It's, it's fluid. You can't just completely be like, oh, I want to bench press this weight. Your body's going to adapt to it. You're going to get used to benching. But if you do other things, you might not be as good. And, you know, you got to keep things fluid. Yeah, A lot of people see um, results. They don't necessarily see all the work that's being put in all the short-term, long-term goals that have been set in place, that have been reached, that have been modified. You talk to these people, let's say, from all walks of life, and someone goes, hey, I got a condo in Manhattan. You know, they weren't born in that condo. They worked their way up to get there somehow, and whether it was, it was through hard work, through their job, through the school. They made it, and they, they didn't just get there out of the blue. They worked their way up to get there, which is something that, you know, it's important to remember that your goals can change and they do get modified so long as you are working towards that long term goal. When you're setting your goals, you want to structure them so that your short term goals are in tune with your long term goals. I already talked about that where you dream big, but make sure you have short term goals that are in line with those long term goals. So it's kind of like if you're on a ground level and you want to reach that first level goal that's like your long-term goal and then you have steps like a staircase leading up to that level you want to be at so you want to make sure you have all each step that you are making is leading up to that floor you want to be on you don't want to be like taking a step here and then you walk down and you go take a steps in a different area and then you take steps and you're never going to reach that floor you want to be on because the ladder or the staircase you're on isn't leading up seamlessly to that goal. So think of it as a staircase. Each short-term goal is a step reaching your long-term goals. So that relates to kind of your SMART goals because you want to make sure that you can measure the short-term one so that you know when you're done with it and that you attain it. And then you can move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. I mean, it doesn't have to be like one after the other, you can do them all at once. So make sure they're just leading up to that long-term goal. I like the idea, but I also like, I think it's fine to have short-term goals that have nothing to do with anything. If you ha want to make a short-term goal that you want to uh, get better at doing interviews, I don't know, you want that's your short-term goal. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to do anything with, say you want 
if your long-term goal is to be extremely fit, it doesn't fully line up, but I think, you know, it could, it's definitely okay to have short-term goals that don't necessarily have to tie into anything bigger, bigger picture. But I do definitely. like that you do want to have short-term goals that do lead up if you have a long-term goal to keep you in check. Exactly. I don't think, I'm not saying all short-term goals have to have a long-term goal connected to. It's if you have a long-term goal, you need to chop it up into smaller short-term goals to make it achievable. Because you can have short-term goals and achieve them all the time. But if you have a long-term goal, it's really hard to visualize how to get there when you don't know what steps you need to take to get there. So it's really mostly just about the long-term goals that you need to break down into smaller goals. Definitely, you can have short-term goals that you can achieve, celebrate, reward yourself, and be done with them. What do you guys consider is the time difference, the framing of uh, what you do consider a short-term goal versus a long-term goal? Is there a specific time that you think is like, okay, no, that's definitely a long-term goal. When I think of short-term goals, I feel like they should be within six months to a year. For short term. So uh, like a New Year's resolution, like a full year of a New Year's resolution would be a short term goal. You think could fall into the category I mean, of short term? I think it could. But also, I don't know. I feel like you can make a short term goal like a year. It depends on what, how time bound are you making them? So I think it's different. It could be from like one month to a year for a short term goal. But I wouldn't make any short term goal more than a year because then it just moves into long term. I think long term is between one to five years. I think short term versus long term goals are definitely bounded by time, but it also is just as easily bounded by, I feel like, skill set. It's more so like short term goals are something that can be achieved with very few additional skills being learned uh, versus a long term goal is a little more long winded. An example that I can think of is something like me getting back in shape would be a short-term goal versus a long-term goal of mine would then be like joining the 1000 club. I, if I'm trying to get my body back in shape, that's relatively short versus, you know, trying to be part of the 1k club. Uh, it's, that's definitely more of a long-term goal and it isn't so much bound by time in that sense. It's more so by my personal skill set. So I feel like short-term goals, can be relatively short in time, a few months, maybe even a year, maybe even five years. It all depends on what that relative long-term goal would be. Long-term goals could also just be like this New Year's resolution. Uh, me getting back in shape is definitely a long-term goal because as it stands right now, I had McDonald's today. I had a cupcake. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of things I need to change to get to to getting back in shape. I, I like that idea of like, it's like short, short term if you don't have to add too much to your skill set versus like a long term where you do build upon your skill set to then achieve. But I'm kind of with Crystal here. Like I, I feel like if it's categorized in months, if you could do it in months, then it's it can be short term. And when you start getting to the year point, it's like, that's that's a long term for me. I don't yeah. know, no matter what it is, like if it's, it takes years to do, it's a long term. I don't think anyone should plan any long-term goals that are beyond five years. I think if you make a, a, a goal that is beyond five years, you're never gonna, you're never gonna do it because it's never, it's with Crystal's smart tactic. Your time frame is just, it's too large. There's no, there's not, it's, just, it's it, when it's 10 years, there's really no points that you can spread out exactly, except for if you're like a kid and you're like, I wanna go to college then okay yeah so maybe that's something that you can do beyond five years but when you're like an adult you're like i want to do something and i'll do it in 10 years or i want to be a famous director in 10 years if you're not planning for something within the next five years it's just you're never how are you supposed to get there i think it really has to do with like i keep saying this but like rewarding yourself and celebrating a win because if you're not celebrating the things you're accomplishing you're not going to get motivation to continue working towards your goals, like making sure you reward yourself and celebrate smaller things that you achieve. It really keeps you motivated to keep going in life. Keep them shorter and attainable within five years or less, honestly, 
so that you can check it off your list of things you need you want to do and you can feel like you're actually doing something one of those things like if you do have a long-term goal you gotta remember that you're not constantly working at that goal all the time it's okay to sit back and be like you know today i don't feel like picking up my phone so leave a message at the tone because today i really (laughs) don't feel like doing anything and you don't have to keep working on your goal it's not every single day you work on it it's a long-term goal it's because you know you can spread it out throughout a couple months. You can spread out through a couple of years. You don't have to work at your long-term goal always. Yep. <laughs> We're going to wrap up our lyric sneak by get making our final guesses with the Bruno Mars round. Um, I'm pretty confident that I got mine. Um, how do you guys feel? I think uh, I'm, I got it. Finally, something I <laughs> freaking heard. I was so excited. Okay, so I don't remember the song exactly but it's like players put your piggies to the moon <laughs> hey uh whatever that's from but <laughs> crystal and it for yeah. carrot magic yeah. in the ah. <laughs> yeah, there you go let's go carrot magic, magic in the in the air. Air. Yeah. Yeah. so speed did you uh pick up on what i said Yes, I believe I did. Unless it, I just completely made it up. Um, but I, I believe I heard you say that you were turning your phone off and staying on the couch all day. Sounds a lot like the lazy song from Bruno Mars. Something like this. <laughs> I don't know what the title is. Beautiful. It is the lazy song. It is song. the lazy yep. song. Yep. Yep. Very all right. Because well I don't feel like doing anything. That was Nothing good. Nothing at all. Crystal, did you finally, finally yeah. get a point in this game? Did you pick up on any Bruno Mars lyrics? I did. I did. Finally, <laughs> I'd like to thank God and Jesus oh. and <laughs> everyone out there <laughs> who believed in me. I finally did it. Nice. And hi, Mom. I hope you're watching this. But I believe Steven said he got a condo in my head. Hey. Gaming girl is happening. Hey. That's what I like. That's what I like, Bruno Mars. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Very well done. So we just completed the lyric sneak. We had a lot of fun playing that game. Let us know if you guys had fun, if you picked up any of those lyrics too, even the ones that we missed. Although I did feel like I got all of them. Remember that? But it is 2022 <laughs> with goal setting and New Year's resolution all coming in together for fruition. This is the new year and we wanted to talk about how this is basically a nice fresh start. Let's leave everything behind us, behind us, because, <laughs> you know, sometimes a year can be very daunting and it can be really heavy for people. Uh, some certain things can happen. And that was that year. Now we got a fresh start start you guys have anything to say about fresh starts in the new year let it motivate you nothing more motivating than a fresh start and a clean slate driving off into a new year you don't have to you can look in your rear view mirror you can look in your side view mirrors and say sayonara to 2021 but keep your eyes on the road and don't crash but you guys are here you made it you're starting the journey road trip 2022 or i guess metaphorical road trip 2022 let's go let's get on the road guys keep the things in the past behind you every second is a new one live in the moment it's a fresh start with with the new year we talked about things we want to achieve you know things that are you know it's like clockwork it's admin work for us but is there anything you guys want to do this year that's fun it's not really a goal. It's just something that you want to do because it's a new year and you want to do it this year. I want to graduate with a master's degree. Woo! Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Let's remember, guys, we want to keep it obtainable. So what else <laughs> would you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> You're a year and a half in. So you got half a year left. I am six months to my tentative graduation date. Nice. Something that I want to do, it's uh, very small, but it's something fun. I want to I want to attend an NBA basketball game again, whether it be at the United Center, whether yeah. it be at the Barclay Center, whether it be at Madison Square Garden. Uh, the past two years, I have actually the past since the start of COVID, I haven't gone 
to an NBA game and I would love to return back and go to any one of them. Just let me go <laughs> and be in the stadiums again because it's so much fun to do it. That's exciting. I wanted to go on an international trip, but with Omicron walking around, I don't know if that's going to be possible. But hopefully we plan like two fun vacations or even just one. Three. I just want to go on vacation. Five. Ten. Or four. Attainable. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> that, not, not 11, not 12, not 13. I'm with that one. I will also love to do a nice international one, but you know, we'll see what happens. But it's 2022. Anything can happen. Thank you guys so much for watching our New Year's episode. We are goal setting. We are trying to achieve those goals. Hopefully you guys picked up some tips to keep you on track, keep you guys accountable. If you guys have tips that we didn't mention that you think is very well helpful, drop it down in the comments, share it with the community, share it with others because you can't be hoarding all that success to yourself. But thanks guys again. We appreciate all the support. Thank you very much. We are on the line. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this content and you want more, make sure to follow us on all our social medias at we are on the line on all of our social media. Definitely follow us on Instagram. We're really active on there. We're trying to get our other ones up, but we hope you guys tune in and see you next week. Happy New Year. Now, what button do I press? Did I do that? Ha, ha, ha.